Welcome to some more multiplayer challenge tips and tricks, this time for the humiliation category. Only one this time, because there's plenty to cover. I will still be grouping together categories that have less to talk about though, and don't worry, I have noted all the suggestions on that first video. I'll get to everything as soon as I can, like sentry duty and wipeout medals and killjoys and all that. So let's just jump into it. I'd say the most difficult thing here, and I've heard some people call it the toughest challenge in the game, although I disagree with that, Surprise! Five kills with hacked care packages. Another challenge returning from Black Ops 3, except there's no Black Hat PDA to hack things from a distance this time. They even added the hacker specialist, but gave them an EMP grenade over the Black Hat. What's with that? However, Zero did create a new way to hunt for this challenge that removes a lot of the luck you needed before, so I'll cover that first. The way the Ice Pick Ultimate Hacking Ability works is when you hack an enemy care package that's on the ground, and the ability works from anywhere on the map of course, it makes the care package belong to you. It doesn't steal the contents and make it a trap from afar like the good old Black Hat, it'll just take the guy who called it in a little longer to capture their care package and allow you to take it quickly which is maybe good and may help you get there in time to take it, because interestingly, if you take it after hacking it to your side, it does make it into a trap, as if it were an enemy care package. But that still doesn't help a whole lot when it comes to this challenge, since you can't hack and be running over there at the same time. The only scenario in which I could see it helping is if the enemy gets the alert about his care package being hacked, the enemy hacker is attempting to breach our system and he sees that it turned into an enemy care package, and he gets scared and thinks it might be a trap, and he could leave it alone for you to come take it. But anyone who knows the game mechanics will know that isn't possible. So hacking isn't what helps you with this challenge, it's being hacked. If you see on the scoreboard someone has picked zero on the enemy team, which should be all the time, especially with it being new right now, you should run the care package yourself, and call it in whenever you think their ice pick ability might be charged up. It varies based on how much score they're earning and if they have equipment charge, so you can't know for sure, but then you call in your care package and leave it on the ground, protecting it as best you can, and just hope they decide to activate their hacking ability. That will make your care package belong to them, which means you can take it back and trap it with Engineer, then proceed to go about your day and hope an enemy ends up taking that trap. That is a lot easier than trying to get to an enemy care package before they take it, but it does still require you to earn the package and have it ready at the right time for them to hopefully call in their hack at the right time. What's especially annoying is that a teammate is likely to walk on up and try to take your care package from you. As soon as that happens, you may as well take it if you want it. Better luck next time. So the method isn't perfect and will take some time, but it is a way to actively hunt for the challenge and provides a decent way out for anyone who hates running engineer and wants to get the challenge done faster. Big thanks to Skadoosh and Muchwello on my Discord server for hopping in a private match to test that out, because even though I did waste my money buying the game on PS4 that I never play, I stopped paying for PS Plus, so I couldn't test it myself. Now I will go over the old, regular way of doing the challenge and everything you can do to help with that. As I said, the zero method isn't perfect either, and the old way does require less effort. It's the way I got it done without ever worrying about it. You're just going to need to run Engineer a lot all the time, for a long time. So if you enjoy using Engineer regardless, no need to rush the challenge. Your first obstacle will be getting to the care package when one is called in. Now much harder to do ever since they sped up the delivery helicopter, it no longer takes a year and a half, and care packages are often called in in safe places like the enemy spawn, so good luck sprinting through a bunch of enemies. In terms of a good specialist to pick, Ruin is the only one with a real mobility advantage, not because of overdrive this time, but the grapple may help you get closer to where you expect the care package is coming, and the grav slam could help you clear out the area around the package when you get there, however any specialist weapon may help you fight your way in to secure that package drop zone, and remember when doing the challenge the long way, you'll likely be working on it over several prestiges, maybe all of them, I got mine done in prestige 8, so picking a specialist or a certain class to try to help a little bit isn't realistic. I know I've seen some people say they like free-for-all for this, and it makes sense in some ways. The care package may get called in somewhere that you have a better chance of getting to in time, or the owner is more likely to have been killed by someone else, and if you can kill that killer while they're trying to take it, you have a chance. And then there are seven other people in the game that could potentially take the bait, better than only five or six. 
but there are downsides as well. Often when one gets called in, everyone fights over it. It's not going to be easy to grab. And I'd say for that reason, care packages are less commonly used in FFA. You can try it if you like, but again, I come back to how long this method of unlocking the challenge will take. So don't pick a game mode specifically for the challenge if you'd rather be playing something else. You're going to get frustrated. Any respawn mode is fine. In terms of predicting care packages, one thing that may help is making a habit of rushing to the opposite side of the map, maybe with the help of a grapple, at the beginning of any round-based mode, like the halftime of domination or every new control round, since that is a time a lot of people like to call in a care package that they have saved from the previous round. So if you can sneak by everyone using an outside flank route, depending on the map size, you may be able to get there in time. Yet another thing that can help you get to a care package is any killstreaks you have saved up. Very situational, but if you have a hellstorm to drop on the care package caller, that could be exactly what you need to get over there. In this example, I happened to have a mantis on the ground at the perfect time to walk it over to the care package ahead of me, park it next to it to guard it so that I could run over there and set the trap. The dart is super easy to earn, and if you have one ready when a care package is coming, you could throw that straight up in the air, activate that boost, and try to speed over to where the care package is getting dropped. The disadvantage of that is that you won't be moving towards the care package, so even if you kill the owner, that doesn't mean you'll be the one to end up taking it. Well, killstreaks can help. As I said, very situational, but this whole challenge is situational. The final big thing that can help you get there in time is to make the map smaller so you don't have as far to run. Does that sound like a Nuketown recommendation? Why yes it does, how observant of you. The answer to every challenge is always Nuketown. It is much easier to predict where a care package is coming in, probably in whichever back area the enemy team controls, and you actually have a decent shot of sprinting back there. And another perk of Nuketown is the increased chance at getting more than one kill with one trap, which you'll see a clip of, and that does award multiple bait taken medals, all of which will count for the challenge. Now moving into the remaining strategy after you successfully trap a care package, which also applies to the zero hacking method, you want to either let yourself get killed or get as far away from it as possible. Getting killed is great because they'll think they may have killed you before you manage to take it and go in to take it for themselves. But if there's nobody there to kill you, just run away to the opposite side of the map and try to flip the spawns back so that enemies will spawn on the side of the care package. If it's domination, do everything you can to take the opposite flag. There's nothing worse than trapping a care package only to have your team spawn around it for the entire time until it despawns a couple minutes later. If you happen to be running Seraph, try putting down your attack deploy on the opposite side of the map to try to force your teammates away from that care package. At this point though, it's mostly out of your hands. You have to sit back and hope that nobody on the enemy team with Engineer decides to disarm it, especially the person who called it in is likely to have Engineer for the double tapping ability since they're running care packages, and they will have received that sound notification that their care package was stolen. So you're mainly hoping for someone else on their team to take the bait. At least it doesn't glow red for engineer users. They'll just be able to disarm it if they decide to take it. And don't worry, the skull that appears on top of the crate is only there for your team. The enemy team doesn't see that there. That would be a dead giveaway. A couple final things to keep in mind when you're taking the care package. It isn't a good idea to get greedy and double tap the enemy care package before trapping it, because they may notice that reroll, and when you trap it, it can reroll again into something new, so anyone who sees that double reroll will know it's a trap if they're paying attention. And then after you take the streak, hold on to it, don't call it in immediately. If the guy whose care package it was saw that he had a lightning strike, and then hears enemy lightning strike targeting active, and sees that his crate was re-rolled to something else, that's very obvious. But if it was just re-rolled, and nothing has been called in, there's a chance maybe it was double tapped by a friendly teammate, and maybe it isn't a trap. Now, you may see in these clips that I completely ignore that advice and call stuff in and double tap it anyway to get something better, but that doesn't mean it isn't good advice. I just like engineer and use it all the time regardless, so I was never personally rushing this challenge. That's everything I can think of for getting those bait taken medals. You can either hunt it by running care packages, leaving them on the ground, and hoping they get hacked by an enemy ice pick. You just have to deal with the frustration of teammates trying to steal from you. 
or if you love engineer, just hope to get it done over time. It will take a while though, you need enemies that are running care packages, and then for them to earn it, and then for them to call it in somewhere you can get to in time, then you actually have to take it without dying and before any other teammates do, then someone has to take the bait before it gets disarmed, there's a lot of luck based steps in there. But if you like engineer, don't stress over it too much, and just be on the lookout for those opportunities. After that challenge, everything else in here pales in comparison. There is the Hail Mary challenge for a combat axe long shot kill, saw some questions about that, something I really could have included in the equipment video. You just need a good spot to line it up, and I'd say by far the easiest is going to be from window to window on Nuketown. It has the two things you need, being a narrow area you'd expect people to be. There are no mounted guns in this game, or a war game mode where people are building bridges, but a door frame will do, and it's a fairly high traffic area by the nature of of it being Nuketown. It does depend on who you're playing, sometimes nobody uses the upstairs windows. I'll admit I was pretty lucky, got it done right at the beginning of the first game I was trying for it. Ignore that practice shot to judge how high I had to aim. To hit through the door, I aimed on the right edge of that front onion dome thing while crouched. Some dude walked into view. Nice and easy. It may take a few games of Nuketown if you're not that lucky, but I can't imagine it taking much more than that. I think we can move on from Hail Mary. If you had to get like 20 Tomahawk long shots, I'd go around through all the maps to find other good spots. Like just off the top of my head, I bet on Seaside, that cracked church overlook spot would be good too. But there's no reason to memorize a dozen Tomahawk lineup spots when you only need to do it one time. So pull out the Tomahawks whenever Nuketown comes up. These top 5 challenges are all fairly basic medals that will happen naturally through gameplay. Then there's backfire here. If you only ever pick up enemy weapons when you run out of ammo, that would be taking a while. You may eventually decide to go for it and get it done by always picking up enemy weapons. What you should be doing though is trying for the nice gun challenge if you haven't done that. And as you go for that, you'll be getting progress on backfire. Nice gun requires you to pick up an enemy gun and go on a 5 kill streak with it, with at least one of those kills being a backfire fire on the original gun owner. That part is luck, but it doesn't take too much luck to run into the original guy. I'd recommend having scavenger or picking crash to avoid having ammo problems. The rest of the class isn't too important, but I would recommend making it very perk heavy since you'll be dropping your gun as soon as you get the opportunity. There's an example class like the one I used. And then for getting the streaks, everyone has their preferred method like camping kill confirmed tags or kills on people swarming around the safeguard robot. Completely up to you. I did find safeguard to be the easiest when it comes to people actually paying attention to the objective, making the streaks a little easier, and it seems like people in the featured game modes are more on my skill level than the pros I seem to find whenever I go for a lower population mode, but I guess that's all pretty subjective. And a downside to safeguard is that rounds can end rather quickly if one team is much better than the other. So this challenge may take a while. There can be some frustration, especially if rounds always seem to end when you're on a four kill streak, which seemed to happen to me a lot. No, that was it, dude. That was the fifth guy again. Just stop escorting the fucking robot so fast. Robot in range. Clear its path. Yeah, but can we maybe not do that? Can we maybe just not escort the robot? Jesus Christ, dude, I hate all of you. And you may sometimes be going on a streak much longer than five, but somehow never run into the guy you need for the backfire. But at least this is a challenge you can actively hunt for, and shouldn't be too bad when you end up picking up a gun that is actually good. You should try to take the gun directly from a dead enemy, by the way, not just any gun on the ground, so that you know it isn't a teammate's gun, because that won't work. And I don't know why I was freaking out about the killstreaks. After I finished with that challenge and only needed more backfire medals, I ended up getting several more streaks when I didn't need them. Finally, we've only got this row here left. Arch Nemesis and Nope should complete themselves. There's no real way to try for them and you don't need to. Then there's getting 50 punch kills. I do find punching kills much easier in hardcore with the one hit punches. And in fact, there is a different challenge in Tour of Duty for 25 punch kills in hardcore. So at least half of them need to be in hardcore, but I'd recommend it for all of them anyway. Even though it sounds like it might be harder to close the distance in theory. I don't know, punch kills come really easy in hardcore. I ran a class like this with the lightweight and dexterity is fantastic for better movement and the quicker sliding. For any melee class, I can't go without dexterity. It isn't even that big of a difference, but it saves my life all the time. It's like people never expect you to slide that quickly and miss a lot, but maybe that's more of a PC thing with the lack of auto aim. 
And armor might seem like a decent idea here to possibly soak up one extra SMG shot in hardcore, but you really don't want that movement penalty. So there we have the humiliation category. I know some people were concerned about surprise. Hopefully you feel better prepared to go for those now or can use zero to get it over with faster. If I skipped over something you had a question about in here, as usual, feel free to ask and I can try to provide more detail. If you're just waiting for one of those other challenges I mentioned at the start to be covered, well, I'll try to get there soon. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.